Welcome back to the live coverage of YCS Milan 2018. We're here in day number two. Players had to get up very bright and early, started at 9 a.m. And we cut down the field to roughly 450 players after yesterday when we saw 1,771 players show up. The feature match area has suddenly filled up. It seems like one of these two players, both very accomplished guys, brought his own fan club. So let's bring them in and let's hear it for them. In the blue corner, we got Adrian Dursun from Germany. Adrian, he is the reigning Spanish national champion. Hey, Adrian, uh, people know you. Obviously, you've been uh, very successful in Spain, of all places. How come that they are traveling there to play the national championship? Uh, it was kind of funny story. Like a friend of me said, come on, we go to a vacation together. And at the last week of uh, travel, he realized his ID wasn't any more valid, okay. so I was forced to go alone. <laughs> so I take my opportunity to win this event, or? <laughs> yes, pretty good friend and interesting friend as well. You also had some success recently, most recently, if I remember correctly, you did quite well at YCS Utrecht. Yeah, that's correct. So uh, how did that event go? Um, at YCS Utrecht, I had uh, less time to prepare, so I chose to take the deck I was playing at Spanish Nationals to Draco, the best deck, mm -hmm. <laughs> and because I had a lot of knowledge about my deck, I could manage to get into the top cut, yeah. so it was pretty fine. <laughs> All right, so how did you prepare for this tournament? Do you feel like you made the right deck choice? Um, I'm thinking I didn't make the correct choice I, because of, uh, not about the deck, because of some cards I'm playing, right. because I thought about a different meta game. Okay. And last question, how are you feeling about going up against your opponent here? Um, since uh, it's not the first game against Christopher, I'm pretty good. Like, I played against uh, him in Utrecht, the, not the YCS, the European Championship. Mm -hmm. And they are 1-2-0, so I think maybe it could be again. <laughs> All right. Okay, thank you very much. Please have a seat. His opponent, Adrian, already said it. It's the most accomplished player from Denmark, Christopher Nielsen, in the red corner. Hey, how are you doing today? I'm good, you? Yeah, I'm not too bad. It's pretty, still pretty early, so we're yeah, doing good. Yeah. Don't, don't ask me later. <laughs> um, you have had plenty of successes. Uh, uh, can you just run through some of them? Uh, my first top ever was YCS Toulouse back in France 2012. Uh, I was only 13 years old when I started playing competitive. And uh, the second one was YCS Barcelona, and I have European Championship or Brighton. I have Bochum, I have, I have really a, a lot of tops. Last one was YCS London when I lost in top 16. So you've come close so many times. Many times. The closest I ever get was I lost to Marcello Barbarian top eight at European Championship 2017. Well, he was on fire, he was 17-0 and I was really proud to play against a so good player and try to do that as well as like try to be better. So I want to thank him also as well for did that, like he played really well and he deserved to win. Oh, that's, that's high praise coming from you. So, when is it going to happen? When are we going to see first ever Danish uh, champion of a YCS? Uh, hopefully soon. This event, I feel really comfortable. So, uh, hopefully I can, I can take it all the way. All right. And you experience sitting in the feature match area. So, what do you think your chances are going up against Adrian? Uh, I don't take it. Like, my chances, like, we're playing the same deck. So, I don't know, like, depends on our probably the dice roll. Probably who go first, who go second. Like, kind of that. But I will try to do my best either way, so just take one game at a time. All right. Please have a seat as well. So both our players are ready. Got to double check if we lost the judge there. Um, let's perform the die roll and see who's going to go first. So we pick water. <laughs> water and fire. Oh, you get very selective about those dice. OK, high roll it is. That's a four and a three, so Christopher gets to decide who goes first. I will begin. All right, obviously is what uh, Adrian immediately said. All right, stage has been set. We're ready to get our game on. Let's take it away. Our commentators for this round, it's going to be Tom Payne and Marcello Barberi. Welcome to round 10 for YCS Milan. Uh, yeah, we got a really good match coming up. Yeah. Christopher making me blush with the I compliment. know, I think he just wanted some favorable <laughs> <Yeah>. commentary. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if it works for him. But yeah, I, I of course remember our match in top eight at Euros. It was such an incredible event for me. And he is one of those uh, really consistent players. Yeah, he's he, he's been around. He's been topping event after event. Like, yeah. got a lot of respect for Christopher. Yeah, he is one of those players that were like, 
really close to the top for uh, multiple times, and but still gotta get the trophy they really aiming for. So hopefully he will be able to get it today, and I'm sure he keeps trying. Adrian is no slouch either. I mean, exactly. He, the, he got know, the trophy actually. Invaded Spain. <laughs> yeah, invasion. Yeah, <laughs> I I also invaded like uh, last year. I went to France for example for playing, but I stopped <laughs> in top eight. He actually managed to win, and uh, yeah, that seems to be a trend because back in the days uh, you couldn't really uh, join like other when you had to yeah. qualify for the national championships exactly in Europe. but now it's actually cool because as adrian just said ever. it's just go a chance holiday. yeah go on holiday see another country and enjoy uh, a different tournament because national championships are a lot more about that country that culture so it's pretty cool but before going to the match let's quickly look at some uh, um statistics yeah, for so the event hopefully we've got the country breakdown, breakdown coming up yes here we go. So, uh, not surprising Italy at the top, but actually, if you think about the numbers, it, it so is. So, there were 1,700. Yeah, and 71, and so it's half. Uh, yeah, less, less than half, Italy. Yeah. And usually when, I mean, it's because this is, uh, as Oliver already said, the last event of the year, we expect a lot of players, and uh, Italy is not even 50% of it. Well, usually, like, Wasias Rimini was uh, dominated by Italians. So. Uh, it's sort of nested a bit further deep in Italy as Rimini. Exactly, and something <laughs> harder to get to. <laughs> it is. Milan is uh, quite reachable, so that improved the number, being the last YCS of the year as well. So it's quite a huge event, but we see a lot of different countries. Uh, uh, France, especially, with 150 players uh, almost is a surprise. Yeah, we've got a few Americans and Canadians exactly. in, the, in the other category. And uh, yeah. from Denmark, Australia as well. You have Australians. Some, yeah. But let's see how it changes. Maybe we should uh, see if we can find the like total number of countries we have <laughs> represented. That'd be that would be fun. cool. So let's try to show up uh, round nine. How it changed now, and uh, well, not too much to be honest. Uh, well, the Italians have. It's yeah. kind of expected, I guess, because you exactly. get a lot of local players and then the more experienced players yeah. coming from UK outside. for your joy overcome France. That's oh, the good. Oh, I change. didn't notice that. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> Excellent work, everyone yeah. from the UK. And Poland actually <laughs> showing up. Uh, Polish players are actually doing well. And I think the Greece has moved up a few spots as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, but Poland coming up of the other <laughs> section. Who, who's is moved surprising. into the other section? That's Maybe we can figure it out. Yeah, but Belgium. Belgium. <laughs> but well, oh, um, being defeated by Poland. <laughs> It is. So what we're all waiting for, though, is the deck the breakdown, deck of course. So and here let's we go. quickly take a look at so that. So we have a peek at round one. This is round one. Yes. Pretty, uh, honestly, I, I don't think anyone can be overly surprised. Exactly. But it's not as uh, oppressive as YCS Utrecht, to be honest. The Sky Striker Pure is still the most played deck. But right. it seems like it's... Uh, a lot yeah. of other. A lot of other, and uh, also Thunder Dragon finally showing up with some huge numbers, I think. A bit more force than at uh, London. Yeah, but Combo Deck's still quite behind uh, due to the new Forbidden Limited list. The only one in this top is basically Dark Warrior, but uh, we know and some FTKs are around. around. Yeah, Pendulum possibly. But after... Swing to round nine. Day two. And we have... Uh, a surprise there. A surprise in the form of we Paleozoic, can read Paleozoic Frogs. Paleozoic Frogs. That's the deck that brings you back to YCS Prague. <laughs> and, um, They've snuck in over the, the True Draco deck somehow. Hopefully, it was probably some other people beating the True Draco deck because from yeah. my experience, playing Paleo Frogs against True Draco was always a bit of an uphill Yeah, battle. it's <laughs> definitely not the <laughs> best matchups, but it seems like we are still having a lot of different decks. We saw last round that Gemini is in competition, Prank Kids are still in competition, there are two still at the top tables so we're hopefully we'll have a different variety of decks in, in, in the terms top of card. performance i think it looks like sky striker has got the highest conversion rate if we, i think most decks have lost about two-thirds as opposed to sky striker lost about half yeah so but for this match as uh, christopher said they know what they're playing because the counter of their deck is 60 cards <laughs> indeed and uh, that's the, an extra shuffling time yeah. to the game <laughs> i guess so but one of the only deck that plays 60 today is dark warriors and it's gonna be a mirror match so let's go to the table and see how it goes speaking of uh, 60 cards do you remember the tournament where somebody turned up with like a 2,000 card deck? Oh yeah, there is a picture going on <laughs> on the internet where, yeah, two people were actually needed to hold it and yeah, that's <laughs> More crazy. than two to shuffle probably, <laughs> I guess. So Christopher won the Daryl, which is quite important in this matchup, and well, Izan... You know, there's, I mean, Adrian's running three Ash. 
Yeah, Christopher is running no hand traps. So, but I mean, Adrian's got three and 60. Indeed, but his hand is not looking too good. I No. It's I, I agree, that is not good. I mean, yeah. it depends what the Suchinoko hits, but it's got a it's got a chance of hitting itself. Exactly. We're but seeing Adrian with a few tech cards. He's got the polymerization for Destiny Hero Dangerous. He's yeah, got he's got some spice in his deck. Sabers. I mean, the new Neo Space Connector is obviously nuts. And yeah, the new... Almost a shoe in for the main deck, but... Connector is such a great card. You can help going into the number 86, which is usually the ending goal. But it can also make Gambler for even six, depending on your opponent hands. So he keeps the Monster Reborn, which is not necessarily something that I agree with, to be honest. No, I don't agree with that, because you really want the draws yeah, here. Yeah, so I think I would have kept it to guarantee one more chance, and... It's not like we have Invoker he anymore. He gets the best case scenario, though, so... <laughs> he needs any go. Warrior deck, any Warrior Monster, and he gets... A, oh, the only one you can't Normal, though. So that's well, gotta hurt. Another Malicious, huh? <laughs> oh, no. Uh, you can only... No, Malicious would have been yeah. almost <laughs> decent. But well, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Reborn Malicious Tribute, some <laughs> Malicious. So now, let's see, does he... Yeah, yeah he just goes go again. again. Does he just... Oh, if he hits the Butter Spy, he's fine. Yeah. If he hits the Suchinoko, it's bad. Let's see. Yeah, I agree with you. Said I, I wouldn't have set the monster reborn. Yeah, either, definitely. You, need to discard. you just want more chances, especially because you have two of the same danger. And now we need to see what another is chance drawn. for a warrior monster. He and gets. He does get it. So now Ooh. his hand is looking really good. Some uh, moments of tension for Christopher, I bet. But he resolved both dangers, and now he's in a huge spot. He can go for the old and. I mean, he probably knows that if he makes a big 86, that yeah. Adrian will not be able to deal with it. Exactly. As we can see, Adrian does not have the Ash Blossom, which would have been really good in this spot. And when the deck's so big, you pick up half of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and essentially, all you need is a, an Isolde, maybe an Extender to go into the number 86. But if you have additional uh, level 3s on the board, since number 75 can be made with any number, you can even make um, number 86 with like 6 or 7 <laughs> materials if you want. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seems so pretty handy. He's gonna send 4. And that must have been pretty tense for Christopher. That was, that was on the roll of the dice there. Yeah. And he's still now, he's set the monster reborn, so he's still got it now. Exactly. Something really cool that I like about this deck is a different use of uh, Phoenix Blade, which, of course, we know in Goki was really good for uh, uh, Nightmare cards. But in this deck, it's actually really cool to abuse the one Armageddon Knight, because you can banish it with uh, the blade and then use Levier to bring it back. I quite like that, yeah. yeah. So or you can use quite a cool DDR combo. if you're feeling especially cool. Yeah, and that's what he's going for. He's going to go for Summon Sorceress and then uh, get back this word, and it's quite a huge combo. See what uh, Christopher comes up with. Yeah, he does go for the Armageddon Knight. And basically, the ending goal is the Phantom Knight uh, XYZ. Uh, XYZ is already Link Monster, which is uh, Rusty Blades, because that alone gives you a level 3 and a level 4 in the form of Brigadine and Boots. I, I really like summoning Power Tool Dragon and searching DDR. Oh, yeah, that, I don't know if everyone combo. is doing that, but. Uh, it doesn't look like no, they he's are not enough DDRs, but I, I really like it. Yeah, <laughs> you got some cool combos with it. Yeah, the cool part about that is that if you play it, then one is old uh, is uh, is enough, so you don't need extenders to do it. So what's he summoning off summon sorcerers? Do we think? Um, depends what he's gonna go for. Is he is he summoned anything? Um, possibly. But what did he summon? I missed it, but it doesn't really matter because uh, let's check. Oh, maybe it was the the cloak. No, because the malicious was used. So I think he might not even used it. But you need summon sorcerers, yeah. <laughs> yeah, who needs it? <laughs> but to be fair, he doesn't need it because, as I said, the rusty blades gives him a level four and a level three, and then since he has the strudo, that's the other level three, and that's enough. So. Number 86 is one of the best cards in the game when you can resolve it, because as we will show you once it's summoned, if 
Adrian doesn't scoop be before. <laughs> it prevents your opponent from actually normal or special summoning uh, for almost two turns, depending on how many materials you have. So it's going to be one, I think. Given it, did he? I should be true. It's going to be f yeah. Did he not use summon sorcerers? It, uh, yeah, I think he didn't. But I mean. I guess. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I mean, yeah, that is number 86. I, uh, I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, that is fine. With uh, five materials, which means uh, Adrian is not going to be able to summon for two turns. And 86 is uh, unaffected by other cards, so it's basically impossible to deal with it. I mean, I don't know if the deck kind of runs out of steam. Because obviously Adrian can just set a monster and hope he doesn't. Yeah doesn't die but he's got and that's where the punish from summon sorcerers could come in handy but we can see that Christopher has a nail space collector in his hand which he added last turn so yeah I think I think and that gives him already two monsters so it's gonna be tough for Adrian <laughs> I mean wrong mini had only uh, only one monster but you know yeah he's just uh, displaying its power with its six materials and yeah Adrian <laughs> picks it up so Christopher wins game one with uh, quite a rush, honestly, because uh, if the dangers didn't go that well, he could have risked uh, actually not doing much. And yeah, uh, no invoker anymore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, likely. double suit Shinoko would uh, would probably get you there. Yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, he's not running any uh, any Earth Warriors, but yeah, it, they would have surely <laughs> did if uh, Invoker was <laughs> still super around. Super X probably would have found its way. <laughs> yeah. So um, let's go to the side decks. Uh, Adrian is now the one in the lead because he's going first and he's going to try and do the same thing, even though, as you said, he's playing uh, a little more text and spice with the polymerization to search with Vion. But what he said about the uh, that he thought he, he had some bad decision with the deck builds might be like the twin twisters and stuff like that that are definitely not good in this matchup. And yeah, I mean, he can side it out for. Lancia or something. I mean, there's not like. Um, I don't know. What do I mean? Obviously, the Twin Twister is pretty useless, but. Yeah. You don't really need anything else when you're going first. There's no more combo pieces in his. Uh, Definitely. I mean, you could side in Ride in Radiant because it's a, a dark yeah. level 7. But that seems the most useful. <laughs> At the same time, uh, Christopher has six Antrops, which are mainly good in the mirror match, and that's Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries, along with Lancia. We saw yesterday in the future match between Darren and Joshua the Lancia yeah, really how the Lancia stops the FT, not stops, but uh, helps a lot against the Danger FTK. I would say it stops it. I don't think yeah. the deck's got much of a chance of getting through its deck without the use so. of the beginning of the end. But it actually shines the most in the 60 card matchup. Because if you think about it, if you cut them off malicious, all the Phantom Knights card, and that's already and so essential yeah. for the combo. And this word, yeah. Yeah. So we're going to see if uh, Christopher gets one of his end drops. We got to uh, keep in mind that he's playing 60 cards, so the chance is quite lower, but he's still got a chance. And, you know, it can be used to prevent evenly yeah. matched. Exactly. <laughs> Do you think evenly matched is worth signing against such a deck going second? No. Just to stall? <laughs> Just to stall, because if oh. you get rid of the pressure, then you can set monsters? Yeah, maybe you get rid of the pressure. But I don't think it's terrible if you don't have anything else to side in. I mean, as Christopher showed there, if you make his old, yeah. you can just add something for next turn. If you're not gun blaring your opponent, you don't need to discard your hand, so you just add something for next turn. Yeah, it's then. obviously not great, but if you don't have anything, it's probably forced <laughs> to, to at least hope. That you get there, especially maybe in Sky Strikers where you have like Widow Anchor and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, but this deck's got like yeah, no, no, no defense. No, no, not at all. Maybe Fog Blade could be relevant. And if you make the six material wrong minyad, then you can't even set it. I think a one cool way to play around it could be, yeah, but it's really tough to use the Fog Blade efficiently like that, so. Maybe, uh, maybe Swift Scarecrow to stall. <laughs> I feel like a Kaiju is probably better. Well, you can't Kaiju though. Under oh, you can't even Oh, my yeah. goodness. You what a card. Yeah, it's <laughs> such a good card. All right, it's got to be Swift Scarecrow then. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Uh, or, or XYZ Encore. What do you think this is? Uh, Raiden. Radiant, the Kaiju. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a dark and it works well with the deck. Yeah, makes sense. So... 
So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna assume Adrian doesn't have any tricks up his sleeve in terms of going first or second. No, I wouldn't say so. Especially because you know, in six cards, as I said, the chance of opening a nine trap is definitely lower. This is one of the things. I mean, like some of the thing. There are some bonuses to running a sixty card deck. Yeah, there are some bonuses, like especially in the form of going second against Striker, I believe, because you can play cards like uh, Mer Mer, which it is gives you up. Yeah, you can play all uh, like cards that you don't yeah, want to draw and hope they sit in the deck, and but, uh, you can just have more resources in yeah, the deck. But, but at the same time, yeah, you basically lose your side deck. <laughs> Exactly, and also in the main deck there are some bombs. That's what I call them, like uh, Connect, soul, uh, charge, soul charge, uh, and maybe even called by the grave if you want to consider that. So uh, it has its ups and its downs. I think exactly. maybe a lot of people think if you want to run, you know, four equip spells, then yeah. it's necessary to run sixty cards to decrease the chance of drawing. Because you, if you play five, then it's quite. You just can't afford to be drawing yeah, that many. I think it's spells. less than five percent of opening two if you're running five and sixty, so that's a pretty good chance. But let's see the ends. Oh, we say as he draws a quip spell. Yeah, but uh, the, connect oh, there's the connector and no end drops on Christopher's side. Do you think Christopher will just scoop when he sees connector? Pl well, uh, forward connector. Quite possible because he has both an extender, connector, and malicious to discard with the dolphin. So it seems like an incredible end for Adrian. And uh, yeah, it's possible he just wants to save time, but let's see how it goes because you never know. Maybe he opened uh, two equip spells. You That's true. That's true. You can wait uh, for a little bit and see how it goes. I mean, the, you can definitely scoop too soon. <laughs> oh, surprisingly, Adrian actually decided Winter Cherries going first. That's. Well, maybe he just sided out the Twin Twisters. Yeah. In for the Winter Cherries. I guess it's fair enough. At the end of the day, the Dark Monsters for uh, Graffer. Yeah. Level threes for you know. <laughs> yeah. Whisperer. But yeah, Adrian is now super safe because he sees there is no end trap on the other side. And he can discard as many cards as he yeah. likes. He can he, he can just do whatever he wants, really. To be fair, Lancia wouldn't have been incredible in this uh, scenario, but would have still hurt while Cherry was probably really better. The good thing about this deck is that sometimes you just want to cherry the 86 if you have it, or the 75, which is even better, I think. But then if they play Gambler, you can still get, like, this card for still four. Gamble. Yeah, you can still... Four or six, depending if you open Collector, because as we know, you can just uh, use the second effect of Connector to bring back Dolphin, and that's already two cards hey, discarded. Incredibly powerful card. Such a great card, yeah. So yeah, I've, d I've definitely seen people scoop games too early. Yeah. I mean, I guess... But you also see people concede games too late as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the thing is, if this uh, is the trend for this match, you, they still have 30 minutes, essentially, so... Yeah. There is no rush, honestly. But I, mean, I heard a story of someone su that just normal summoning a Super X and their opponent conceded, and they didn't have any other Gokis in their hand. They just Damn. summoned a Super X and... That was it. <laughs> What's he going to add for his old? Nothing really. Very, <laughs> well, I know you can't use it. Yeah. Oh, Graffer. Very exciting. Graffer for next turn. And I think that when he sees that he doesn't have those equipped spells, it's going to look pretty grim for Christopher. Oh, that's a shiny monster reborn. Why is it like black? Uh, on the reinforcement of the army, actually. Oh, was it? Ah. Yeah, the platinum rare, I think. You can see Adrian's favorite version of the combo. <laughs> he might decide yeah, to. It's uh, surprising to see. I mean, a player uh, that brought through Draco to so many events, then <laughs> to suddenly switch to such a combo deck. Well, it's, I mean, it's good to be versatile with the decks. I, I know. was going to say, I've never really felt... I mean, I guess I prefer playing with combo decks, but yeah. I've never felt, like, attached. I would always... I know, but it's not so common, actually. There are a lot of players who are just, like, keep 
finding the, I don't know, the control deck or the combo deck of the four mana, that's a huge mistake, I think, for beginners, because you should always just find the best deck or the deck that works the best for that event while but often focusing. you see, like, players winning events when they're players who are experienced with the deck. Yeah, that's true, but it's not that Yeah, I, pr I prefer having the... But what I hope is the correct deck choice for an event. Oh, it feels funny that sending the uh, take, linking up to three in the summon sorceress and then putting it away <laughs> into uh, yeah, basically a link one using it as a one one material. But, but it was fine because Zold got another monster and then summon sorceress got another monster. Yeah. At least he used the summon sorceress. <laughs> Indeed. He hasn't used Connector. I mean, for yeah, what it's worth, I mean, he can dump the Greffer out of his opponent's hand. Yeah, but he decides not to. I mean, he can just leave the Summon Sorcerer. Yeah, I mean, he knows that it's not going to matter, honestly. Is it just done? Seems surprising. Maybe he's going to make a very Yeah, big at least he makes it for one more material, which makes sense. Yeah, I thought he wanted to do a better, uh, um, a larger combo. It's I mean, he could, but I mean, yeah, I guess it's, it's just no needed. need. Yeah. I mean, he makes it with six materials so that it doesn't even. He can blow his opponent field next turn, so. And summon another monster with summon sorcerers. Yeah. I mean, there are only a few cards that are able to deal with number 86, and they're not really played. One of them is XYZ Anchor. Because even though it says target and is unaffected, it's actually uh, regard the materials of the card, so it works <laughs> against it. And the other one is... Uh, but XYZ the Encore only detaches once. No, it detaches all the materials. All the materials? Yeah. Oh. But, and it brings back uh, the number 86 to the extra deck. Nice. And then there is like Herald of the Abyss, which would work in this scenario, but usually they have the Phantom Knight. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> yeah. Sixth card. Oh, too late Always to the party. The way. Yeah, Lancia is too late to the party. I mean, not that it would have done a uh, huge I mean, amount. He used the malicious? It didn't. Uh, he used malicious as effect, right? Uh, no, I think he still has it. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. There's a malicious banish. Okay. There's two malicious banished. <laughs> yeah, he didn't really go for the usual, like, Lavier, Spam, or Magadon. He just went for... Yeah, I mean, a regular combo. I mean, if he knows it, then... I guess th there's really no need. There's just nothing you can do against... Yeah. He can blow the head. field, and... Uh, since he does six materials, uh, Christopher is cut off summoning for three turns, which is huge. <laughs> That's so, a lot of turns. Uh, yeah, I think so. I feel like <laughs> one is normally sufficient. Yeah, one should be enough. Three, uh, well... Christopher just checking that his opponent... Maybe he should make another another whisper and <laughs> Yeah, now we can make the Yahtzee, get the Mer Mer if he wants. He can do anything. And um, yeah. But I mean, he is only on 2,000 life points. That's true. I don't know what Christopher could have to do 2,000 damage. Double Firecracker? He can only use one a turn. Oh, damn. damn. That doesn't work. I think. <laughs> I'm not sure. So is that enough for Christopher? Yeah, he, yeah, he, he picks say, up his Yazi cards. doesn't normally return the cards. And the Adrian evens the score, so we are going to see a game three in this duel. And let's see if the odds <laughs> changes for the player going second. I feel like uh, Christopher, yeah, they, they basically have very similar side decks, but at least Adrian is playing also the Ash Blossom in the main decks. And he's siding the infinite impairment, so it actually changes a lot. Wait. So he goes up to nine. Twelve. And traps, because he's also playing Charity. Oh, no, he's not playing Lance. No, he's oh, playing Lance. So, yeah. He goes up to twelve. Yeah, twelve is uh, quite a good number, actually. That's a, that's so, a good solid quarter of his deck. The thing is, though, that depending on the end of Christopher, one and trap is not necessarily enough. It's, I feel like yeah. Lance is often enough, but... Other than that, it's prob Lancia uh, is probably the only hand trap. Which I mean, is it enough. depends on um, the gambler, but I think they're not playing it. Are really? they? No, 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 he is. Yeah, he is playing it. There would be no reason not to. But 
Yeah, actually, Adrian is not playing it. I quite like the number 75's name. <laughs> bamboozling Gossip Shadow. Yeah, Bamboozling. But yeah, uh, Gambler is there, and that uh, plays a huge role when you get Cherried and even Lancia sometimes. Depending so, on what they choose to... Yeah, depending on your end especially, because if you're more reliant on uh, banishing cards as a starter, then you're probably not going anywhere. But if you're not, and if they want to wait for number 75 to eat Cherry with, then you're free to go. And I would say it's... I feel like Cherry on his old would probably be the most popular. It de yeah, I mean, it from other decks, yes. Entirely, if you're playing a mirror match, I guess you can consider it. And it's usually better to eat 75 instead of 86, because 75 has a different effect, which is relevant on the field. It negates That's monster true. effects, yeah. so they can't go... To give them the challenge of see if they can make a five monster 86 without the yeah, use I mean, of the uh, 75. Soul Charge is probably the only <laughs> card I can think of that is able to do that. Uh, yeah. There's only one of them. It's kind of unreasonable. But it's there. It is there. Used to make it in Telenites, number 86, without this. Uh, yeah, it's the original way. The OG. Don't know if there's any other cool ways of summoning like four level four monsters. <laughs> I use Anju maybe, but they're not warriors, so yeah. it doesn't work. <laughs> That's the thing, there has to be warriors. Hmm. Don't know, maybe there are some that will come out at some point. Bubble Man. <laughs> <laughs> got your hero lives, you got your Stratus. <laughs> got your emergency calls. Why not? You can, uh, you can dream. <laughs> <laughs> I will. <laughs> Okay, so Christopher is actually maining uh, the mid breakers as well. So he's gonna have a mid breaker, cold body grave, and connector to have like some outs to end traps. Does mid breaker, mid breaker stops impermanence, but I it think it only that's stops it. impermanence. Yeah, so it's not quite Might effective. Even be I mean, I don't know. I suppose he doesn't know what hand traps Adrian is yeah, choosing to run. But, but I mean, chances are you're just gonna keep. I feel like mid breaker, you're just. It's there for Sky Striker, and again, yeah. it's sort of niche, maybe useful against other decks. I agree. The only one I would consider siding uh, in going first is probably Lance here, just because you can use it even if they stop you at any point, and they're probably going to stop their turn as well. But with Cherry, they can probably. Uh, chances are they you don't have your target anymore if they eat his for example, so you can't yes. eat their yeah, soul. That's true. And if you eat 75, it's probably too late because they have the battle phase, so it's kind of weird. Apparently you could, like, cherries their Armageddon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think there was a situation like a pendulum mirror match where you could cherry <laughs> one of the pendulums <laughs> that are face up on the extra deck. That sounds good. I, I, I yeah. never thought of that. That sounds quite fun. Yeah. Can't imagine it being good. But I mean, if they I don't have much in the extra deck, there, yeah. you can just get rid of what they have in the extra deck. It could be good. This back and forth game involving pendulums <laughs> and cherries. <laughs> Maybe you can chain it to off dragon if it works like that. I don't know. <laughs> targets. I don't know. That could be fun. <laughs> Both got wisdom eyes. <laughs> yeah. Somehow sided in cherries <laughs> and pendulum mirror. <laughs> I mean, it happened for lecture mind, but sometimes. Yeah, so Euros, I had I had the cherries in the side deck, and I thought I had an Electromite in my side deck, <laughs> okay. but not a Dante. And I oh. played like four, three Brave. or four Burning Abyss. Well, the decision you think it on, was, was on Sunday night. Yeah, I could have put the, the Dante in it. Mean, to be fair, I beat all of the Burning Abyss decks anyway. Yeah, it's so. not surprising, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> well, let's see how this last game. Uh, Goes. goes. It takes so long to shuffle a 60 so card first deck. First of all, I'm the not sure I could manage a 60 card deck. Uh, no. Uh, Ash yes. Blossom is there, and that's about it. While. Oh, the end seems to be complete. Break? I, I can't see. Yeah, he breaks. Lance here, Fossil, mid breaker. He doesn't have anything. Wow. What a bad end for What's Christopher. What's the oh, malicious? Yeah. Quite unfortunate, he doesn't have anything. I mean, Adrian's hand is not... No, it's... Amazing. I mean, you have Junk and Eastern and Monster Reborn. You have I enough mean, to make, that's yeah. That's all you need. And Lancia, uh, yeah, and you can see Adrian smiling when he passed, and the Phantom Knight picked up is quite good.
Oh, the Phantom Knight's sure. pretty good, yeah. Yeah, sure, the Lancia can slow him down, but it seems like it's gonna hurt a lot. Yeah, he might just be getting OTK'd here. Yeah, quite unfortunate for Christopher. You gotta feel bad when you get to go first and <laughs> you still <laughs> manage to brick with such a deck full of extenders. And to be fair, even uh, the game one, he was almost uh, breaking. If it was he very close, yeah. Yeah, if he didn't need the good uh, a danger cards. I suppose there's no real issue with using the Azold to add here. Yeah. I mean, often you just be safe, because if you're not going to use the card, why risk the Ogre? But he's got Monster Reborn. Exactly. And to be fair, he's going uh, second. It would so, be very strange. Yeah. But I mean, even even so, like, why risk it? No, even so, you, you shouldn't, of course, but he has the Monster Reborn, so he's not even a risk. I quite like all of the just random old equip spells. Yeah. <laughs> Autonomous action unit. I mean, I suppose the other ones are all new. I mean, Phoenix, Phoenix Blade is quite old. Oh, Phoenix Blade is very old, actually. Yeah. But that one is not like a sort of... I'm talking about sort of janky yeah, yeah, old yeah, ones. Yeah, I know, I know. Everyone uses Phoenix Blade. <laughs> I think maybe Living Fossil is uh, probably maybe the best. No, DDR. Oh, DDR is by far the best. Isn't that just free? Uh, Isn't that free equips? Uh, yeah, I think Christopher agrees with you that that's only three equips. Oh, but now he's forced to summon a level three. Because I think, okay, no, they're, they're going to allow him to send the fourth equip spell. Uh, there is some discussion about that. I can see the point, honestly. Adrian went for a summon, so I can see him just sending three equips and being forced to summon a level three. Uh, it's going to be a decision by the judge. I, it, don't I mean, he did send three and then yeah. tried to summon a monster, so it seems like he resolved the assault, but it's one of those situations where... I get the feeling that the correct thing is that he gets a sort of... I mean... Uh, uh, something minor, what's it's it called? It's close. Because to be fair, he sent three, then you summon an Armageddon Knight. You could get a minor for not summoning it, but then you still send three, so you're forced to summon level three. That's how I think, how I think the... It, it usually is being judged, at least from my experience, from when it happened to me or whatever. Yeah, fair enough. But I don't we'll know. see how, what the rule, honestly. Because I mean, normally, activating a card is is sort of one action. So yeah, but if, if you, you do you, something illegal, such as send three and summon Armageddon Knight, the, the entire activation is I one know, thing. but paying the cost is illegal, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, so paying I mean, the at cost least is what, legal and then what I've been told is that if you use something like Twin Twister and target something illegal, you don't have to activate the Twin Twister now. It was just yes. an illegal activation. But I mean, I don't if know there is a legal here. target for Twin Twister, then you're still using Twin Twister, you know what I mean? Uh, and uh, since you don't have to. Mm, I, I mean, it might be I mean, it depends. Things, it's one of those things where it's not that big of a deal, but I'm sure they, the judges were pretty aware of what happened, so we'll see what... Yeah, th at least there'll be no miscommunication about what happened here. Yeah, I mean, it's not that big of a deal, to be fair. I mean, even if he gets to summon a level 3, I don't think it is the end of the world. Yeah, I did think... He has the I Eastern mean, still and the Reborn and the Phantom Knight in Grave, so... Yeah. It's sure, maybe the only relevant thing is that the Lancia could hit more, hurt more, but... I still, yeah, I, I agree. Not, it's not, not going to be much. that big a deal either. Yeah. I think he just still summons... And uh, yeah, no, they have to summon a level 3. Summons yeah. Dolphin. Yeah, or even a Phantom Knight. Let's see. Yeah, Phantom Knight's fine. I mean, I suppose he doesn't know the uh, the Lance he's going to come down. Um, Get some junk forward just, for, just to prove us both wrong. I mean, the only important thing is I hope for that is silent. Among those three, the one he forgot is not Phoenix Blade. That's the only relevant <laughs> thing. But I think it was Fossil, so he does yeah. have the Phoenix Blade. He's, he's going to be very careful before yeah, he exactly. commits this time. <laughs> he was about to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And now Lancia is dropped. And uh, it's pretty so good. still make summon so Yeah, I mean, he doesn't know that he has double extender, but that would have been good because the obvious thing to do was banish uh, um, to search another boots, so he has a special. Is he, a, is he just attacking? I... I feel like he should have thought about that for at least a minute more to see if it was possible It could be that he's actually tilted by damage. the DC. Oh, yeah, 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 of course. But wow, that's surprising. 
I, I think he can do a lot with that end. Yeah, I mean, he could still... He's, I don't know, he can still make summon sorcerers, at least. Is he passing? Wow. What? What's going on? I don't know, but I think that was the second Blue Mountain Butter Spy. Oh, that's the worst feeling. That's the worst feeling because it's one of the only extender that can be normal summon. And I learned that in top at West Yes Utrecht, actually. Because <laughs> I opened two Butterfly and I, and I thought I could actually combo and The off. Fossil can't bring back the Lance here, right? He can't. It's only level 4 or lower. So he's stuck again, and at this point, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's going to think. He passed Adrian. Pretty excited. I'm still not sure why he, he didn't do anything last round, but I'm pretty sure he's not going to miss it again. He has the connector. No more end traps for uh, Christopher. And the handshake is there. Adrian takes Ooh. the match, and he's still in the tournament. And let's go to the post-match discussion to just witness what happened. Oh, let's get rid of that. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Well, that was uh, quite a mirror match, uh, full of surprises, full of tension. Uh, well, in game one, we saw uh, also some tension. Cause yeah, I mean, if he hadn't, he had to hit both draws and then... Yes, and then get to some Warriors. Get the right draw. Yeah, because yeah. the first one with a Butter Spy the and butter it didn't spy matter. Butter really shaky. Yeah. Butter Spy is one of my favorite extenders, but... Uh, apparently. Apparently, they're quite risky in this deck. <laughs> and Hadn't known that. Yeah, but in the end, he could still manage to summon the number 86, and it did not matter for Adrian. And we saw pretty much the same thing game two. There were no end traps on both sides. So in reverse. Yeah, it basically happened, but he had even a bigger opening. Uh, but then game three was the weirdest one, because we get to see uh, Christopher opening with a brick, essentially. Complete brick, yeah. It, he, couldn't, yeah. he couldn't, like... He could have activated the mid breaker yeah, field, but that was the only card exactly. that Sandy could yeah, play. That's not great, as we saw. <laughs> and uh, yeah, only had Lancia to try and slow Adrian down. Who, for some reason, probably tilted, uh, decided not to continue his play. I think he could have done a lot with the Eastern and Reborn. I think it's quite easy when you just see a card that you aren't expecting or you've made a mistake to be slightly flustered and then. Like, it's easy yeah. to make a mistake and then get a bit confused. And like, I think. Maybe that's what we saw happen to Josh yesterday when the Lancia came down. He Definitely. wasn't expecting yeah. it, and then you kind of but go... I think that's a thing. I guess when you're on, on stream especially, you get even more frustrated because, you know, people are watching you. Yeah. So that's something to consider. But otherwise, you should always try to keep your composure and so what, and see what happens. Because it didn't even add just one play. It had multiple plays that is available. So I'm not sure, but, I mean, we got proof that the Dark Order is yet another deck we haven't seen this weekend that is but it's surely here. a contender. I mean, there's two of them. You know, exactly. X1, well, and one of them X1 now, but... Yeah, so we will see going pretty well how it goes them. later on. But yeah, congratulations to Adrian for the match. And let's go to the interview with Oliver. See you later. Yeah, you got two players for the price of one. We're back on the main event stage with the lucky winner, Adrian. Congratulations. Thanks. And Christopher, you came very close. I couldn't play. You couldn't play. I couldn't play cards. Last game free, I, opened, I couldn't play any of my cards. So it's really bad. Like the chance of a good not playing in this deck is really low, but it happens sometime in the tournament. It does happen, yeah. So maybe walk us through it again, Adrian. The first game, how did it go for you? The first game, it was super exciting. No, just kidding. I watched my opponent by rolling three times a die and saying, "Okay, you got combo. Okay, I go. Let's scoop." <laughs> so yeah, but but you did bounce back, obviously. So the second game was a bit more exciting. No. no, there's no difference. You wouldn't say so. So it seems like you guys are both not extremely fond of the mirror match. Why did you then uh, pick the Dark Warrior deck? Mm, I picked it because I played after London. I picked it up instead of the FTK deck because it got me more known and Drove was not that good against this deck instead of the other one. So I want to play this as well. Instead, of I, have, I think I have a better matchup against like a Sky Striker Trickster and stuff right. like that. And the uh, other danger FTK lose straight to Trickster. It's a bit of an irony that you yeah, end yeah. up going out of the tournament against the same deck. What was your thought process going into the uh, tournament? My thoughts was like, I was playing before Sky Strikers and I, it was a super fun deck, but I bricked so many times, I, I was like, I need a change now. Yeah. When I saw this deck list, I was like, okay, I'm going to play this. I topped three regionals in a row with it. So I, I thought, that's my time, I have to play this now. All right. So Christopher came very close, um, now out of the tournament. 
fortunately, there are other things you can do at the YCS. What's your, gonna be your goal for the weekend? You're gonna win a giant card or something? Uh, yeah, m I might attend a giant card tournament just for a play. I liked playing cards, so that's why I'm here. So, and unfortunately, I couldn't top, but I still I love Yu-Gi-Oh. Otherwise, it's a really good game, so I will I will probably play a giant card. And I was about to say, you know, pretty much half of the players in the venue, everybody knows you, so yeah, I think you're bound to have a good time regardless. Well, yeah, I will also I will travel here with my friends, like Sebastian and Alan. Really nice. We're staying in a room together. Uh, we just have fun. We're out and eating and stuff. Like enjoy enjoy the vacation time. Right. And, um, of course, we're probably going to see you in Düsseldorf. You will see me 100% in Düsseldorf. <laughs> 100%. All right, Adrian, you're one loss. Uh, you, you cannot allow another loss, but you're one step into the top cut. What are you going to do for the last round? How do you basically mentally prepare for it? What are you going to do? Um, I mentally prepare mostly don't test yet. Like, I, I'm here to have fun, so I'm going now with my friends, maybe something to eat and... Oh, that's just, but that's just, after yeah. the tournament. No, like, no, no, no. Right now. Yeah. Taking a break. Yeah, why okay, not? Okay, well, we, we actually got some, some food options yeah. in the venue, so you're going to take advantage of that. Yeah, of course. All right. What do you think your chances are in the last round? Is it going to be as hard as this match? Uh, funny way, see, it depends on the matchup. Like, if, I, if I'm playing against Alter Geist or Father Dragons, I think I'm pretty safe in. Mm -hmm. Maybe if I uh, break, it could happen. Yeah, sure. But if I play another mirror match, it depends on how many hand trap he has inside. All right. So, well, we're going to, I think both of us are going to wish you all the best for the last round. Yeah. So, again, congratulations. Thank you, Christopher. No problem. And with that, we're signing off for round number 10. We got one more round in Swiss before we're going to do the second cut of the weekend. And then we're going to be down to just 32 players. We're going to duke it out and see who's going to become the champion of YCS Milan 2018. See you guys.